Hello, my name is Ye Jun Hong. I'm a medical student in the University of Calgary, and our team is here to explain thyroid eye disease as a link between endocrinology and ophthalmology. Endocrinology is a study involving hormones of the human body. Hormones are released from exocrine or endocrine glands and broadly affect the tissue uh, in a systemic fashion. Thyroid hormone thyroxine specifically affects metabolism in all the organs across the body, significantly increasing the rate at which we use up our energy. Therefore, systemic disorders that arise from thyroxine, thyroxine production disorders therefore can also affect the eyes. Thyroid-related ophthalmopathy is also known as dysthyroid orbitopathy or Graves ophthalmopathy. This is an immune-mediated disorder and a spectrum of ocular abnormalities that accompanies thyroid hormone disorders. And we'll explore this throughout our PowerPoint. Thyroid-related ophthalmopathy often presents with hyperthyroidism and sometimes with hypothyroidism. As the name suggests, this is an abnormally high thyroid hormone in the system. There are characteristic symptoms and signs related to uh, this presentation. There are different causes that raise the body's thyroid levels. This can be from iatrogenic causes or by external sources of thyroxine through uh, levothyroxine, which is a thyroxine medication or it could be from an autoimmune condition called Graves' disease where antibodies bind to the TSH receptor st stimulating a constant signal to the thyroid gland to continue producing thyroid hormones. Hot singular nodules or multinodular goiters can form in the thyroid gland as well which, which inherently uh, increases production of the thyroid hormone. Lastly, and rarely, uh, a pituitary tumor can form uh, within the brain, uh, which constantly may produce TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. Symptoms and signs of hyperthyroidism manifests in the eyes as proptosis, or forward bulging of the eyes. If you ask a patient to open their eyes, and observe the eyes from the side, you may notice that one of the eyes, or both of the eyes, in fact, protrudes uh, more than normal. That is proptosis. And also re lid retraction, especially uh, the upper lid may be observed so that more of the eye uh, is visible. And when the patient looks up and then suddenly down, uh, the upper lid might not be able to fall down in concordance with the eye's movement. This is called lid lack. Other uh, presentations in the rest of the body is quite related to the high metabolism rate that hyperthyroidism stimulates. Uh, the body radiates heat, especially in the palm region. The skin becomes velvety. Uh, there is tremor from extra rate of energy use. And you may observe some nail changes, such as onycholysis. Heart rate can go up and may cause um, heart abnormalities in chronic thyroid conditions. And proximal muscle weakness may be detected which would be apparent when climbing stairs or something like that. The reflexes would be brisk. Going more in depth to what some of what we just talked about in the last slide, the heart speeds up due to increased metabolism, so tachycardia, and there's a higher risk of atrial fibrillation because the heart is beating so fast. Because the heart squeezes with all its strength, there's increased systolic pressure. And because it also relaxes all of a sudden from all that contracted state, the diastolic pressure becomes even more decreased. Therefore, the decrease between 
uh, the dis increased discrepancy between these two pressures result in the widened pulse pressure. The stroke volume, of course, would be increased because of the significantly heightened degree of contraction. And from all that activity of the heart, there is hyperdynamic circulation. Proximal muscle weakens so that reaching up to get something from a shelf, for example, or climbing stairs uh, become more difficult, tender reflexes become brisk or strongly reactive to stimulus. Goiters can also cause, as a physical, physical barrier, uh, tracheal stenosis as it compresses the airway, hoarseness, as it starts affecting the recurrent laryngeal nerve of the vagus nerve. And also esophageal compression as the esophagus goes right behind the airway. And so both tubes can be affected by a uh, goiter. During a physical exam for uh, hyperthyroidism, you can observe for all the signs and symptoms we covered. Uh, look for the patient's degree of comfort and, and their posture. Uh, look if they're, they, they look as if they're heating up. And check the vitals, uh, especially blood pressure and heart rate. Check the reflexes, check for proptosis and lid lag. And try palpating the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland can be felt between the cr cricoid and the thyroid cartilage and can be felt when you're positioned in, uh, in front of the patient or behind the patient. Uh, feel for any nodules or goiters have, and also have the patient swallow a glass of water to see if the thyroid gland moves normally. We can also look for the Pemberton sign when the patient raises both arms up until the arms touch the sides of their face. This exacerbates the mechanical blocking effect of any swollen uh, thyroid gland. Therefore, a positive Pemberton sign is any uh, facial congestion and, and cyanosis. And after some time, approximately one minute, uh, respiratory distress upon assuming this position. Investigation for hyperthyroidism includes attaining the TSH. TSH is a thyroid stimulating hormone that's released from the anterior pituitary gland. And therefore, it is very important to have an idea of what the level of this is to see if the reason for high thyroid hormone is from the thyroid gland itself or from a central cause controlling the function of the thyroid gland. Of course, you should also order uh, the free T4 and T3 to confirm any signs you find uh, that, it, that are related to hyperthyroidism. If the patient has Graves' disease that's causing hyperthyroidism, they will have anti-TSH receptor antibodies that bind to the thyroid gland and stimulate it continuously. So a workup for those antibodies is important. And a nuclear scan is also indicated to see if there is increased uptake of the radionuclide and to see if there are any nodules in the thyroid gland. Treatment of hyperthyroidism depends on the cause. Antithyroid medication like the PTU and methimazole uh, suppress the production of thyroxine. This is the mainstay of treatment for disorders that involve unregulated production of thyroxine, but not for hyperthyroidism from pathologists like thyroiditis, where the problem is not in production of the hormone, but in the storage. The inflammation of the gland itself causes ill storage and allows leakage of uh, 
thyroid hormone and because it resolves itself spontaneously it doesn't need active treatment and instead uh, need pain management and steroids to reduce inflammation Back to the production problem, the side effects of PTU and methimazole include skin reactions, agranulocytosis, vasculitis, hepatitis, and arthralgias. And for pregnant women, these medications can have a very adverse effect on the fetus. And so it is important to talk with the endocrinologist to choose an appropriate medication of the lowest risk according to your uh, trimester. Symptomatic treatments for tremors and palpitations uh, can be relieved with a beta blocker. And for presentations such as tumors in the thyroid, something that is severe or has a potential to spread to other body systems, surgery um, that involves cutting out one lobe of the gland or the gland entirely is warranted. Before we move on to thyroid related ophthalmopathy, let's explore the anatomy of the eye. The eye itself is placed within the orbit and is surrounded by orbital fat. The orbital fat insulates and protects the eye and also keeps the eye in its level um, to prevent it from being sunken in. The eye is also tethered to six extraocular muscles, the superior rectus, superior oblique, inferior rectus, inferior oblique, and lateral rectus and lat medial rectus. The lateral rectus is controlled by the sixth abducens nerve. The superior oblique is controlled by fourth or trochlear nerve. And the rest, the remaining four uh, muscles are controlled by the third, or the oculomotor nerve. The seventh muscle, levator palpebrae superioris, can also, is also uh, controlled, innervated by uh, the third nerve. The oculomotor is responsible for opening the eyelid. And that's why when there is palsy of the third nerve, there is ptosis or drooping of the upper eyelid. In contrast, closing of the eyelid is controlled by the seventh or the facial nerve. When introducing the disease, we touched upon the pathophysiology a little bit. Let's re review it comprehensively in this slide. There is an inflammatory response against the cause of the thyroid disorder. And Graves' disease is part of this category of the thyroid disorder. This disease is caused by antibodies that bind to the TSH receptors on the thyroid gland. And instead of inhibiting the receptor, it continuously st stimulates them. Therefore, the negative feedback system of the thyroxine to the central anterior pituitary is rendered ineffective because even if the production of TSH is reduced, there will be continued stimulation of thyroxine by these antibodies. The anti-TSH receptor antibodies also activate the immune system so that the T cell lymphocytes are modulated against thyroid follicular cells. This is part of the coordination system of the entire um, immune system to attack and concentrate on the identified enemy. Such lymphocytes are also active against the epitopes in retrobulbar space. They coincidentally have very similar epitopes and maybe the connections will be further elucidated when we delve into embryology. Thyroid disease-related ophthalmopathy is the most common cause of proptosis in adults. It more frequently occurs in females. And hyperthyroidism is the most common cause. About 93% of thyroid-related ophthalmopathy is due to high thyroid hormone levels. Hypothyroid, in contrast, is only caused in 6%. 
of the ophthalmopathy. Myasthenia gravis can also be a risk factor. <clears throat> Myasthenia gravis is an, a neuromuscular disease caused by anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies. This disorder can also cause double vision and drooping of the eyelids, known as ptosis. But that is a story for another episode. In terms of lifestyle changes, cigarette smoking can be a significant risk to thyroid-related ophthalmopathy. Cigarette smoking can be a very significant risk to a lot of diseases, except for ulcerative colitis and cervical cancer. The effects of thyroid disorders on the eyes are multiple. In just the eyelid, there is the problem of eyelid retraction, um, raising the risks for exposure keratopathy, lack of thalamus, which is the inability to close the eyes completely and also raise the risk for exposure keratopathy, lid lag, which is a lagging behind of eyelids as the eyes look down, and reduced blinking. Eye surface disorders include edema and tearing, red eyes, as inflammation continues, superficial keratopathy due to increased exposure to air, and conjunctival injection. Movement of the eyes itself can be impaired as well. We have already talked about uh, proptosis or bulging of the eyes. And unlike in other diseases, um, in thyroid-related ophthalmopathy, the eyes are resistant to retropulsion forces of the globe. In other words, uh, you will feel resistance uh, when you apply freezing drops and try to push the globe back into the head. If one eye is more restricted than the other eye, binocular diplopia can be present due to both eyes being mechanically unable to coordinate and converge the light rays from the same object on corresponding retinal areas. In terms of the optic nerve, visual acuity and the visual fields may be limited and when, when the light perception goes down, RAPD may also be present. The patient may feel a foreign body sensation in their eyes and there may be dyschromatopsia or the limited ability to see color. There is a classification system for symptoms of thyroid-related ophthalmopathy just because of the, sy the systemic diversity of the presentation. The word classification defines the categories in seven classes, which is easier to remember when you use the acronym NOSPECS. N is for no signs or symptoms. O is for only signs which are the observable features as opposed to the symptoms that patients feel and disclose. S is for soft tissue involvement, P is for proptosis, E is for extraocular muscle involvement, so limitation of eye movement, C is for corneal involvement, and finally S, sight loss. Before moving on to investigations, one serious complication of thyroid disorder is known as the thyroid storm. The sudden increase in metabolism, metabolic rate uh, due to high thyroid hormone levels can lead to delirium and altered mental status and lead to a decrease in bone density and cause osteoporotic comorbidity. Muscle weakness can occur as well as impaired liver function. Because of the overload in the heart, uh, there is atrial fibrillation, a CHF, and cardiovascular collapse. The hyperdynamic circulation and turbulence uh, in the blood can cause thromboembolic disease. And this complication overall is a very urgent case uh, which can even lead to death if not managed appropriately. 
When evaluating for uh, of thyroid related ophthalmopathy, uh, it's all, always important to take a complete ophthalmic history. Pay attention to any history of thyroid disease and what symptoms and su symptoms the patient have been, have been noticing and experiencing. The heat intolerance, weight loss, and palpitations are quite good indicators for thyroid disease. Ask if the patient has any other medical conditions, um, especially any autoimmune diseases. And finally, rule out B symptoms. They're having night sweats that drench their pajamas, um, if they're having fever or unexpected significant weight loss of around 10%. For thyroid-related ophthalmopathy specifically, uh, eye exams that are important to conduct would be cranial nerves, so extraocular movement in all, all cardinal positions, as well as checking pu for pupils. Visual acuity is always important to check. Uh, color vision to rule out dyschromatopsia, uh, forced ductions, and exophthalmometry to ascertain if there is any proptosis. Visual fields can also be diminished in uh, TRO, so look for that as well. Uh, this can be done by sitting in front of the patient and determining the confrontational fields. You can find out more in our ophthalmic physical exam videos. And as mentioned before, the investigation for thyroid-related ophthalmopathy would be looking for the TSH levels as well as T4 and T3, the free version instead of the protein-bound ones, and also looking into thyroid-stimulating antibodies. In the case of limitation of extraocular movements or suspicion of inflammation or in instances of proptosis, imaging is indicated. With the orbital CT or MRI, extraocular muscle enlargement can be seen and the typical sign for thyroid-related presentation is when their tendons are spared. And inferior rectus is the most common uh, extraocular muscle affected. Then it goes clockwise in terms of frequency or counterclockwise depending on which eye you're talking about to medial rectus, superior rectus, then the lateral rectus. The MRI is better for tissues and soft parts of the body like the optic nerve, optic nerve orbital fat, and extraocular muscle. CE, CT is better for orbital bones. Treatment of thyroid-related ophthalmopathy involves treating the underlying thyroid disease. This can uh, this may mean that the patient can be referred to an endocrinologist to be treated with medications. We have talked about this in the uh, slide before. And surgery is also another important uh, means of fixing thyroid-related ophthalmopathy. Uh, surgery is delayed until we observe 9 to 12 months of stable interval. When a quiet, quiescent interval ends, and ophthalmopathy flares up again, surgery is proceeded from posterior to the anterior in that order. So first, orbital bone decompression, then fixing for strabismus by altering, progressing or regressing the insertion points of the extraocular muscles, and lastly, the eyelid reconstruction to minimize the risk of exposure keratopathy. The exception to this timing of the surgery is when there is optic neuropathy signs. So when there is any uh, defect in vision, visual fields, visual acuity, and color vision, or if there is extreme proptosis, then we may move immediately to surgery. In thyroid-related ophthalmopathy, typically Diplopia and ocular surface disorders are quite common. And even after treatment, patients may often be left with functional and cosmetic deficits. 
So hopefully by exploring the thyroid disorders and thyroid-related ophthalmopathy, there is a significant link drawn between endocrinology and ophthalmology. Here is a summary slide of everything we talked about in this presentation. Here are the references from which we drew all the information to prepare this presentation. Thank you for watching this video.